Now that we're all fully inspired, we're going to move on to the, the meat of this afternoon and uh, our five student group presentations. So just a little bit of kind of logistics. Um, our students will be pitching their ideas pri to the entire audience, but primar primarily to our panel of five judges. So we have Lindsay Miller, Shannon Yi, Irfan Ali, Ray Rothrock, and Sebastian Lunis. Um, and each group will have five minutes to give their pitch, followed by five minutes for the judges to ask questions. There will be an opportunity later in the afternoon for anyone in the audience to ask questions of the groups. And fair warning, the group presentations will not be in the order of the program. Uh, we use a random number generator. We're engineers, you know, whatever. Um, and the first group that we have up uh, is the Nuclear Plant Personal Monitoring Group, which uh, I'd like you to help me welcome Chris Pereski, Megan Casper, Modest Chikau Chwasu, Sarah Stevenson, and Shrey Satpathy. Before we begin, I just want to say, Dr. Slaybaugh, that was amazing and inspiring. And I want to thank all of the organizers and everybody who's contributed to this for inspiring us and giving us this opportunity. And we'll do our best to make you proud. So are you gonna... oh, okay. yeah. all right. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Chris. This is Megan, Modest, Sarah, and Shrey. And we are Common Sense a company that takes data, tracks, and optimizes it, and is going to save the nuclear industry millions. We all live on the same planet. We've heard about climate change. We've experienced the heat waves, the ocean acidification, and all of the other horrible effects that are happening to our planet. Now, what's the solution? Clean energy. And how do we do that? With nuclear power. Nuclear power is uniquely suited to offer the most dense, clean and reliable energy to our nation. Currently, nuclear power is only 20% of the United States' energy portfolio. So the answer is easy, just add more. However, the problem is right now, nuclear is not economically competitive with fossil fuel sources that pump millions of tons of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. So what do we do? Why is nuclear power expensive? Nuclear operations and maintenance is disproportionately expensive as compared to other power sources. And our company has identified a way to change that. So what is the challenge with operations and maintenance? What's making it so expensive? Nuclear plants are living in the past. They have no communications infrastructure. The most critical asset of a nuclear plant is its people. And right now, operators don't know where their people are at all times. If they had that information, they'd be able to take that optimize all processes, and make the plant more profitable. Our company has the solution. We've created wearable technology that plant staff will wear as they walk around the facility, interact with a network of Bluetooth, secure Bluetooth beacons to transmit location data from personnel to a central server that plant operators will be able to use to visualize this information, optimize plant staff operation, and make the plant better. Our product is uniquely suited and it comes with a, lieu of it, with a slew of advantages. We can introduce our product without any kind of invasive alteration of existing plant infrastructure, meaning that we don't need to work with the NRC and we will not impact the design of the plant. In doing so, we'll offer unprecedented access to real-time data for the operators at a low cost, which will be scalable across nuclear plants of all shapes and sizes. Here we have a mock-up of our product as the operator might see it, where they'll have plant staff walking through the facility and be able to track their movements, making sure that they don't spend too much time in higher radiation areas and that their paths are optimal. We've spoken to the industry, both executives from both current nuclear industry as well as advanced next-generation nuclear reactors, just want to know, where are my people? They've told us that they'd be looking for this product on the market. So what will this product give them? 
by decreasing, by increasing the efficiency of staff, minimizing the time needed for routine maintenance, and offering a an, an valuable alternative to costly alterations to plant infrastructure, we will be saving the nuclear industry millions of dollars each year. So how will we make money? We'll offer the hardware with some setup fees in, included, which will promote widespread adoption of the hardware. There will be no prohibitive costs to giving each personnel at the plant their wearable technology. This meshes with our culture of enhancing safety and security in the nuclear field. We'll then induce recurring revenues through software subscription services where uh, customers will be able to add value as they wish with extra modules. And finally, we'll offer continuous 24-7 management and support that both builds a relationship of trust and reliability with our customers while allowing us to engage in continuous research and development to continuously offer the best product at the best service. No company does what we are doing. There are companies that consult with the plant which requires an access to information that you may not want to give. And there are companies that take data analytics by looking specifically at the nuclear data from your plant that they shouldn't have available. And with where our company is uniquely suited to play to nuclear, the nuclear industry's security concerns. And we can expand to many other markets. We have a diverse set of technical skills that can meet any demand from the diverse needs of our customers. We have an innovative product, that's the bottom line. And with your initial investment, we can get out there, save the industry millions, and bring clean energy to the world. Thank you very much. So, oh, we'll take questions now. <laughs> When will testing? One, two, okay, I guess it's on. When will you first put this device in a real plant? I'm trying to sort that out from your description. Um, the plan is to after your Series A funding uh, is when you would uh, probably want this to go in a real plant. The testing and prototyping uh, in, in, with the seed investment will demonstrate the value of the technology. And as we've spoken with Southern Southern Nuclear, they would like to try this out. And how many people are in a plant? Uh, so any, anywhere between 100 to 200 at, at any one t given time, depending on the size of the plant. Thanks for the presentation. Can you talk us through an example of how the technology would enable a 1% decrease in the staff that, you, that they would need to employ? So obviously we have no real world example of how this might work in a nuclear reactor, but we have drawn a similar uh, drain of logic um, from other industries that have implemented efficiency optimizing maximizing strategies such as this one. UPS in 2014 uh, started installing tracking devices on their personnel and in their trucks and by being able to real-time map the locations and times and checkpoints of all of their drivers deployed out in the field delivering packages, they found different instances after analyzing this data, different times in the delivery process in, that they could cut short. By installing remote fobs, they were able to avoid the 10, 20 seconds that it takes for a driver to open a door manually. And by doing things like that, they're able to reduce time, which in turn, in the larger business sense, uh, reduces amount of personnel that they need. And so by having access to this big data, plant operators will be able to see maybe we don't really need that one person. By reducing that one person, we're saving money. Um, just to add to that, um, currently when we have plant outages, um, this could actually save um, a lot of costs in respect to the amount of employees that are actually used and maintenance procedures. For example, um, if you can actually visualize the position of your employees, um, you can make upgrades or amendments or adjustments in, in future procedures which will save you um, and the number of employees that you actually use. Fantastic presentation. Um, I think earlier you identified about a million dollars or several million dollars per year savings. Can you give us an idea of what scale of the O&M cost that is? 
So um, based on the both based on our, our, talk, our market validation uh, procedures, when we talked to again uh, industry experts, they said that this kind of again we draw parallels from other industries like UPS, DHL. If if this results in saving an hour of outage time, that is big value to them. And, and another point on top of that is that kind of the nature of big data is that it has all of the answers that we need, but it also is what precisely has all the questions we need. Um, so it's not until we install these systems, until we're actually able to real-time view exactly what's happening, that we're able to identify the problem and quantify the problem in the first place. So we know that, objectively speaking, we're going to be able to save money. To exactly what extent that is will depend on the exact plant and what we observe through the data. Based on nonprofit surveys of nuclear plants, um, the average full-time employee cost for electricity generation is $300,000 um, per megawatt of generation, megawatt electricity. Uh, labor costs are about two-thirds two of O&M costs. So that's where we arrived at these numbers. Great job, guys. Good presentation. So, so why you? Why couldn't someone else do this? Or if you do succeed, why couldn't someone else come in and displace you? Okay. So right now, the, there is location tracking technology, but it's used in areas of lower security concern and is not optimized for the nuclear industry. For example, in terms of blue, Bluetooth beacons, they're used in museums to check in with the art and be able to get some information about it. Um, this technology offers people who have industry or insider experience of the nuclear industry. We have human factors engineering, we have nuclear instrumentation, we have policy understanding. Oh, yeah, there it is, sorry. <laughs> um, which enables us to understand the nuclear industry. We're not a company that makes a product and is trying to make it fit in all of the different areas. We know the nuclear industry and we're targeting the nuclear industry. Thank you, guys. Oh. All right, thank you. Thank you.